Hi, my name is Bunny Fufu from Cloud9, and today we're going to be going over a guide for Thresh. So Thresh for solo queue, um, it's really, really good just because he's a heavy pick champion, and that's what's best in solo queue. He can also team fight, which is good. And he can also save your teammates with W, so it's kind of like best of both worlds type thing. And matchup wise, he doesn't really have countered matchups. I would view them as skill matchups. The biggest thing you have to be afraid of, honestly, is the jungler. But the nice thing is, if you know where he is and know he's about to gank you, you can play reactively and W out your ally, your AD, so you can, they can go aggressive while you play passive. So. It's really nice if you're on top of things. So if your jungler lets you do Gromp or Krugs, I recommend doing them. To do so, I would start E, let your AD carry tank about three hits, and then you tank the rest. And you don't really need to kite them, just flay them away, and then run to the lane as far as you can without the camps resetting, and then that's pretty much how you do them. So laning with Thresh, there's a couple of key points you really want to focus on, starting from level 2's power spike and this couple recent patches uh, you might not be getting Krugs or Gromp as much so it's back to the three melees on the second wave if you don't get any EXP early on and just be ready whether it's uh, one wave three melees or if you get Gromp or Krugs and then depending on RNG how many creeps will be left be ready and position yourself properly for the level 2 all in like let's say you're about to hit level 2 let your AD kill the last creep while you get in position to flay them while you're still level 1 and then hit level 2 and then hook them like right after you flay them so that'll most often than not lead to a kill if you play it properly and if the opponent is not ready for it which a lot of the time they aren't and another thing you really have to worry about is landing is the jungler so it really helps if you have really good map awareness and if you know he's on the bot side you can play reactively Let's say you let your jungler hug, or you let your AD carry hug the river side, and you hug the bot side. So if the jungler does come, you can lantern him down, so he'll have more space to run away with. And those are honestly the two major things you need to worry about. Other than that, during the rest of laning phase, just um, put yourself in their shoes and try to be as annoying as possible. I don't know if you've played versus many annoying thrushes, but uh, when you play versus a good Thresh, you'll always fear for your life and being hooked or flash W'd in from the jungler or the Thresh. So just try to put yourself in their shoes and abuse Thresh's pressure via hook and via having the jungler lantern flashed on top of your face. So playing team fights, I would view it as step one, um, evaluate their team and recognize what you have to do. Recognize what you're going to be peeling against and how you're going to do so. And um, for every game, each one of your abilities have a purpose. It's pretty obviously, or it's pretty obvious what their purposes are. Like hook, catch anyone out of position, CC them, etc. W, save allies, like be the distance of three flashes almost instantly. Flay, don't really view it as a slow so much as it's a uh, interrupt, and you can interrupt things as such as. Jarvan EQ, or I'm blanking here, Tristana jumps, uh, pretty much anything that travels, I don't know, Corky W, etc. And then ults, just view it as try to get as many off as you can, keep track of if, if they can blink over it or if you have to force them into it or not. So to evaluate everything, the two major things you want to focus on are positioning and getting the enemy team or enemy carries in the worst position possible and using your abilities to make them have the most potential like hooking carries instead of the super tank even though with CDR it's fine to hook anyone um, and let's say saving your W for carries that need to reposition saving your flay for interrupts like Triss Jump, Corky W, JFAR, EQ and just using your ult to prop, like probably just proc as many times as possible. So for roaming, it honestly, we talked about earlier how put yourself in their shoes and being annoying as possible. That honestly goes hand in hand with roaming. Let's say 
some of the times, almost most of the time, if that uh, river brush in bot lane is not cleared, I'll just stand in that and act like I'm walking mid. And your their bot lane, if you put yourself in their shoes, they're probably pinging their mid laner to get the hell out of there. Threshers on the way, so view it like that and try to be more creative with your roaming. And maybe when your jungler's nearby, roam with him. Don't just like randomly roam mid, get counter baked by the jungler or counter ganked by the jungler and die. Just be very open to different options and experiment with roaming. And you don't always have to go. Sometimes you can roam with your AD. Uh, just be very open to it. So one of the basics uh, slash simple to learn tips would probably be what you want to do is throw your W slightly halfway over the wall and the W will appear on the other side of the wall. So it kind of works with the same way wards do. So kind of look at it in that sense and try to abuse that just because throw it over walls. Like let's say it, it honestly helps for bot a lot just because it can give your jungler really, really good um, pass to come from. So try that out. So this is kind of a much more advanced thing. What you want to do is it's when you hook someone, flash backwards, throw a lantern to your ally, and then take the Q all in one go. But you honestly both have to be on the super same page. You have to be very quick about it, and it's pretty hard to do. So just something to mess around with, keep in mind, and good luck. Okay, so the basic runes that you want to run almost every game are Thresh, which would be 80 reds, HP yellows, arm, or MR blues, and armor quince. And really the only thing you would want to swap out with this page is flat magic resist blues for magic resist per level blues. And then you would decide this whether or not the enemy lane has a lot of uh, magic damage or not in the lane. So yeah. So the two mastery pages I like to run are 0, 18, and 12, and 0, 12, and 18. For 0, 18, and 12, it's more like the 45% CDR playmaking do a lot of damage with Thunderlord's mastery. And with 0, 12, 18, it's more protect the hyper carry, always stay with your AD, um, bond of stone route. And pretty much knowing which one to take is uh, if you're like me and you're a fan of the ultra CDR and you want to hook people every two seconds, I would mess around with 0, 18, 12, look to make a lot of plays and do damage. But if you're the type of, if you're like a Janna or Soraka player and you like staying with your AD, protecting them, and going down together, I would recommend taking 0, 12, 18 and having Bond of Stone protecting your AD. So both of these skill orders, I'm a fan of the max Q right away, just because I'm confident in the ability to hit my hook. and. The only time you're really going to fight an all-in is when you do hit your hook. So uh, you don't really need levels in Flay, which a lot of people do. But if you're not that confident in your hook and you believe you're going to be walking up and scrapping a lot, you can go the second build, which gives you another point in E. So it's two points in E. And then maxing Q. And this still lets you max Q by level 9, which is what you want. And um, people will question me about this often but um it really makes sense because these are the only abilities that go down in cooldown and that's really the biggest thing in supports because we don't have like ability power or attack damage to back up our abilities it's all based on cooldown reduction and maxing q going into w is what brings down the cooldown because e doesn't go down in cooldown and when using e you really want to focus on using it to disrupt abilities rather than using it for the slow percentage that it gives. So just always keep that in mind about your abilities. So in this new season, I still want to cater towards CDR Thresh because I like the playstyle of it a lot and I recommend learning it. And these two builds are probably the best way to do it. Um, there's two different types of builds. One would be if you really, really need to get a Crucible or not. Let's say they have a Lissandra or... Uh, an Ash Arrow that you really need Crucible for. I don't really like going to build, but sometimes you just have to. But let's say they don't, and you can build um, whatever you want. You just need the CDR. I like the Ionian Boots, Locket, Frozen Heart, which gets you to 40 really fast. And 
you're pretty tanky. Um, and after you have that core, you can fill in the items with Banshee's Veal or Righteous Glory. Make sure you're always buying pink wards. Um, pretty much whatever you need. Uh, the only real goal here is to get 40% CDR, so feel free to mess around with a bunch of other things. But this is just what I do most of the time, so it's kind of up to you. So for trinkets, um, starting out, you're going to want to go with yellow trinket. And then once you complete your sight stone, you're going to go into scanner. And then once you hit level 9, um, I recommend getting blue trinket just because of how powerful it is. Um, on a real team, you would honestly upgrade scanner and control vision. But in solo queue... You're not really controlling vision, taking advantage of it a lot of the time. So I would recommend just getting blue trinkets and keep your team from getting caught. Because they last for the whole game. And if you put them in safe places that you think they won't die, you can keep them up for the rest of the game. And it's really, really useful. Put them in places you think people will never check. And they'll be there for the rest of the game. It's honestly really, really fun. And I love doing it. So I recommend you trying it too. Alright, thanks everyone for watching my Thresh Guide. Today we went over some pretty basic stuff and a lot more challenging things. I really recommend playing a lot of Thresh and Solo Queue, mastering them. You can really abuse them for ELO. And thanks for watching the guide. And you can check out the rest of them at lawclass.com.